Well, good morning. My name is Scott Young, and with me I have Sean Sturby, our Technical Services Manager. We're with Optrix Engineering, and this is another edition of the Optrix Insider. We have three topics today. The first one is ransomware headlines. Following that, White House has a memo about how you can combat ransomware. And then finally, Amazon is about to release their sidewalk program, and that'll be an interesting discussion, no doubt. Let's start with the ransomware headlines that you're finding this morning. I subscribe to a number of services that mention things that are happening in the security industry. So it struck me as very interesting that you know, a good chunk of them recently have all been company ransomware, company ransomware. So for example, uh, we heard about the JBS attack Last week, they're now operational. The FBI says it was the Revil Ransomware Group. Following that, the Massachusetts Steamship Authority was hit with the ransomware attack. And they're the ones that provide ferry service to uh, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. The uh, ransomware attack disrupted their operations and led to delays. Fujifilm shut down their network in the wake of a ransomware attack. A Massachusetts hospital discloses a ransomware attack. So it's it's interesting that they are disclosing that they're being hit by ransomware. But what struck me was that how many companies are getting hit by ransomware. Ransomware is still going strong. It's a big business. So it was just that it was, you know, almost get into ransomware fatigue. Oh, just another company got hit by ransomware. Another company got hit by ransomware. Well, it's true. It, it, we tend to think, it didn't happen to me this time, so I must be immune, but ransomware is still growing strong. So that brings us to the second topic, which was that the White House did a memo, advice to the private sector on protection from ransomware. We've got the link to the PDF there, along with a couple of other things. So what do they recommend? Well, they've got a handful of high impact things that you can do. Have multi-factor authentication, especially important when people are working remotely. Passwords alone are routinely compromised. And we've talked about the Have I Been Pond, Troy Hunt, uh, last week where they are, he's collaborating with the FBI and has gone open source because there are so many compromised passwords. Run software on your network called Endpoint Detection and Response, EDR. The first thing it does is it watches for malicious activity on your network. And then the response portion is isolate and block. Oh, we found something on your network that looks malicious. It's trying to decrypt files. It's trying to siphon off files, send files off faster than typical. Block that computer. Okay. Encrypt your data. So even if the data is stolen, it is unusable. So that's going to have to be some sort of uh, user rights software, anything like BitLocker, which is good for data at rest and strongly recommended for things like laptops, is not enough. It has to be on access to the data. Have an empowered security team so that they can patch rapidly and incorporate threat information like what we get from the Optrix Insider into your defenses. So those are the high impact ones. Other things that you can do to help recover from a ransomware attack, make sure that you have backups. It was World Backup Days recently and you know, we want to make sure that you're backing up your data, critical system images, configuration, and it's a trope in the IT industry that if, you, if you're setting up a backup system, you have not actually done a backup unless you test the backup. This is especially true back in the days when people were backing up to a tape drive of some sort. You would back up and it, the software would come up and say, yep, thumbs up, everything's backed up. And then two weeks later, somebody would come along and say, oh, I deleted a file. Can you restore it from the tape? And no, it would fail on restore. So regularly test your backups. There are some great pieces of software out there that will do a backup of a system and then launch it in a sandbox, 
fire it up and then look for some specific things to test that the backup restored properly and that the system was operational. Keep a backup offline. We used to have the idea of something called a worm drive. Write once, read many. So anything written to that drive was, you couldn't affect it. Well, now we have something called unmutable backups for cloud services where uh, you can write a file to the cloud backup service. And once it's written there, it can't be changed or deleted or affected in any way for X number of days. 90 days is usually a good number. So that's a good thing to look into. Uh, update and patch systems promptly. We've said that before. They specifically included firmware. Uh, the next one's interesting. Test your incident response plan. Do you have an incident response plan? What is your incident response plan? Can you get access to your incident response plan if you do not have access to any of the company computers? Okay. Check your security team's work with a third party pen test. Quite often that's an adversarial type arrangement. Uh, you know, nobody wants to have somebody else come in and, and say, oh, you're doing a bad job in all of these areas. But it is a good thing to do because you might have some blindness when it comes to your own systems. Oh, I forgot that we had this open modem or open wireless on the air conditioning unit. And that was used to pivot into the network. Fresh pair of eyes, a third party, we might be able to discover those kinds of things that you've become blind. Uh, in the case of various different uh, ransomware attacks, they recommend segmenting the network so that operations is separate from management. More for companies that have uh, some automation or uh, you can think of the oil and gas industry. You have one network that manages making sure that the oil and gas flow. Then you've got a second network that is for email for the executives and the accounting and all of that. Keep them separate so that if in the case of uh, col um, this colonial, yep. colonial pipeline, the, they actually did have uh, a separation and it was their billing side of things that got compromised so that they, they, at that point, they shut down the production side, but being able to keep production going, even if somebody at layer eight has clicked on something that they shouldn't have would be a good thing. And then I would add something that we've been doing very religiously for the last 20 years, implement least privilege. Don't give people godlike powers on their computer just because they have a CEO or CFO title and it inconveniences them a little bit when it comes to installing software. You don't wanna be the one that clicked on a ransomware link and get that nasty pop-up. Hey, please insert credit card here. So that's a very interesting memo to the private sector to do all of these things because these are gonna do the most to get you not immune from ransomware, but reduce your exposure. One thing to add to that list, of course, is train your users not on what not to click. I know we've said that before, but mm -hmm. it's worth repeating as part of this list. The, the say the best uh, firewalls are the human firewalls. They're the ones that say, "I don't. This looks sketchy, and I'm, I'm not going to click it." I, I think you have put a healthy fear in, in all of us here at Optrix on what not to click. And you're good at when something doesn't smell right, we send it over to you. And some stuff is obvious too, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it, and it's more simple than, oh yeah, it's, it's just obvious there. It's worth making sure that everybody has a common level of understanding. Two vendors that we recommend would be Know Before, who we've mentioned before, and I did a, an excellent discussion with 
Mike Brill from No Before that I'll put a, a link to. And also a, a new company that we have partnered with is called Curricula and, and they do training videos that are more cartoon-like, but they're fun and they're based on uh, learn proper learning techniques. The ones from No Before are, are equally good. They've been around the block for many years and they're led by a former hacker who knows how to do all these things. So, so the, those are two options and I'll include links to those. If you wanna get demos, let us know. Also, you mentioned one of the ideas was getting a third party to look at it through a penetration test. Correct. Uh, and yeah, getting a third party to fresh set of eyes, unbiased eyes to look at stuff is always a good idea because they, yeah, that, and that's interesting. Something you wouldn't think about is, oh yeah, we installed the modem on the HVAC unit so that we knew what was going on, but completely forgot about it. Especially as your networks grow and get larger, there's lots of stuff that still are lurking there that you don't necessarily know about. So, and if you're interested in getting a penetration test, we can certainly talk to you about that. Anything else about the White House memo you'd like to discuss, or do you think we've covered it adequately? Well, I'm going to include an, a link that was also in that same memo that was good security ha habits from uh, the U.S. government as well, and included things like that, password protection, and definitely a good quick read. Good. Okay. Thank you. Our final topic today is the Amazon Sidewalk project going live. Correct. June 8th. So as we're recording this, it's the 7th. June 8th, Amazon Smart Devices, which include the Echo and Ring devices, will automatically, so this is an opt-in option, uh, will automatically be integrated into the Amazon Sidewalk Wireless Mesh Service. If you own an Amazon device, you will automatically be opted in unless you go into the Alexa or Ring apps and change some settings. So the idea behind the Amazon Sidewalk, Sidewalk Wireless Mesh Service is a good idea. Uh, what Amazon is saying is that if you've got spotty wireless coverage or if something happens to your wireless coverage that being able to mesh wirelessly with, say, your neighbor's Alexa or Ring device and getting a good signal from them will allow you to reconnect to your device easier. Well, that's true, and that's a great idea. It is also uh, some of the things that they're going to use this mesh network with are for tracking various uh, Amazon devices. So if you've got a uh, something attached to your dog or your uh, the backpack of your kid, you'll be able to see the path that they're going. It reminds me of a cartoon I saw as a, a kid where the guy gets off the, the school bus and he's going to go right home. And then you see the track and he literally covers the entire neighborhood first, jocks to the dog next door, jumps in the mud puddle, goes and looks for frogs in the creek, does all of those things. And then finally gets home and the mother's going, where have you been? I came straight home. <laughs> yeah, right. He didn't. So we've got a whole list of uh, Ring and Alexa devices that are going to be uh, opted into this sidewalk wireless mesh service and how to uh, get to the settings to opt out of it. Uh, they do say that they are limiting the amount of bandwidth that could be consumed to 80 kilobits per second or 500 megabytes, whichever comes first. But the fact that a wireless device from elsewhere that is not yours is connecting to an Alexa or Ring device, and then from there, across your wireless network, across your internet connection, across your network, and out your firewall, just makes security people apprehensive and a little scared. I would use the word cringe. Yes. They, Amazon does say that they are encrypting it and they are trying to anonymize it and all of that, but best laid plans of mice and men, uh, 
there seems to be a lot of interest in, well, they say it's encrypted, but what kind of information can you glean? Uh, at the very least, you know, if you are uh, walking down the street with one of those tiles for tracking, they will at the very least be able to figure out who your neighbors are. And that could be information that is going to be used for advertising. Oh, your, your neighbor two blocks down has got an Alexa device and a ring floodlight cam, and they also bought this. Uh, you might be interested in knowing this, that uh, you know, people in your area also bought this. Oh, you got a, a security camera? Well, why don't you have a motion sensor too? Your neighbor just bought one because of some security concerns. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. And I, <clears throat> especially with people working from home, uh, you know, I, for, on, from a personal perspective, what you do it, it, with your own internet connection is what you do with your own internet connection. However, if you're also w working from home, and potentially opening up an issue for your employer, then that uh, is a concern as well. This underscores why if you have a wireless network in your office or at home, you should have it separate from the rest of your network so that things like this don't impact it. And I know that you underscored that a while ago with in the office, if you have somebody walk in and you have guest Wi-Fi, that that is not part of your regular network. So somebody can't walk in and necessarily hack, hack you. And well, it'll be interesting to see. I think if people are paying attention, I would imagine that Amazon is advertising this. I don't use any of their products, so I can't really say what they're doing, but uh, this is one to pay attention to and, and think hard about if this is something that you want. Like I can understand the altruistic reasons behind it. it's like just share it make life easier for everybody but th at the same time uh, are you opening yourself up to some se serious security holes never mind the amount of information that amazon is gleaning about mm -hmm. people in your neighborhood um, and then sharing it yes. big data and is getting interesting uh, a, a lot of the wireless devices like the uh, amazon tablets well, there's Amazon tablet specifically for kids. They have a wonderful package of, of uh, learning utilities and programs on them, but they're a wireless device. So I can see kids, you know, in the early grades wanting to take it to school so that they can continue to use that. And now as they're traveling back and forth on the plus side, you might have a way of tracking those devices and where they are, but on the, con side, Amazon is also tracking them. Didn't they, maybe it was with Ring or or a, or a competitor, but bef I remember seeing, uh, this goes back a couple of years, where they wanted to mesh all these cameras together so that if somebody, say, robbed house A, as they walked through the neighborhood, they were basically being monitored all the way through does that ring a bell? It does, Pardon yeah. Um, Ring already has that. It's all of the Ring devices, Ring doorbells in a particular area are automatically part of a local community. Right. And the app will warn you, hey, uh, or you can go into the app and say, I saw this person in my neighborhood and keep on the watch for it. And it'll go out to, all of the other people that have a ring device in that area. So it doesn't really require them to be meshed. It's just, uh, they are geo fenced into an area of various neighborhoods. So the takeaways for Amazon sidewalk, you can opt out of it. We'll include the instructions for that. Use a wired network wherever possible or wired devices. Yeah, you know, it's quick and easy and cheap to put up a wireless security camera, but now it has to be wireless and it's your wireless is extending beyond your house. And uh, 
to get around the problem of devices disconnecting, just deploy better Wi-Fi in your house. I would imagine with Alexa, there would be an option to do wired as well. Mind you, you're connecting to it Bluetooth or wirelessly, I don't. It uses two different wireless technologies, Wi-Fi for their internet connectivity, and then the mesh is a 900 megahertz uh, wireless technology. Interesting. Well, again, it's one of those convenience things that may or may not be a good idea. So pay attention and decide if that is, is the right thing for you to do. Now, I wonder if IT departments, if people are working from home, if they can have a say in what happens at their workers' homes in that regard. There was an article that said that the U.S. military warned people working from home to remove these always on listening devices from their home office. Right. But, uh, and then they've since rescinded that, but it was a, a very interesting thing. Yeah. You know, if you are in your office and you're talking about some super secret private business plan, do you want an always on listening device to hear that record it and possibly send it off to the cloud? That's interesting. It's the, it's the wiretap that you know about, but don't know about or think about. <laughs> the one that you put in yourself. The one that you put in yourself, yes. Well, yeah, things we don't think about when it comes to these Internet of Things devices, mm -hmm. just for convenience. And of course, with, and I'll just maybe finish this on this funny thing where you, you saw a while ago all those instances where kids would order stuff through the Alexa. And then next mm -hmm. thing you know, all this stuff shows up at the doorstep and the credit card gets charged. I'm like, what the heck? Well, dad, I decided I wanted to order all these things and Alexa let me do that. It's like, whoa, <laughs> careful with what you allow. Mm -hmm. Anyways. All right, lots of great topics today there, Sean. Any final thoughts or are we good? We're good. Okay, so first off, we talked about some head uh, ransomware headlines. Then we talked about the White House has a memo about how to combat ransomware and for private organizations and how to keep your network safe. And finally, Amazon Sidewalk is going live tomorrow from the sounds of it. So worth looking into that and see if you want to be part of it. Thank you, Sean. As always, very interesting topics, interesting discussion today. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Of course, if you enjoyed today's episode, please share, like, and subscribe and leave a comment. Love to see those. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Take care. Have a great week.